is the third lecture of four lectures on rotational motion. Anybody who's going to study medicine or any biomedical um, related science needs to have a good understanding of rotation because rotation is something that occurs every time you flex your arm or bend your knees or move your hips. So in this video, we're going to talk about what is required to make something rotate, and that is called torque. So we know that in order to make something accelerate, we have to apply a force to it, a net force greater than zero. Well, the counterpart to that in rotation is torque. And we know from experience that it's much more effective to rotate something uh, at a point further away from the act rotational axis than closer. So imagine a door. If you were gonna push a door open, a big heavy door, it's easier to open it if you push it from the edge, even the door handle, versus if you pushed on it, you know, on the other side of the door, close to the hinge. This is because you're applying more torque. Now, also remember that when you get the door rotating, you don't, you don't, the only way that you can really get it rotating is if you push perpendicular to the door. And the door is parallel to the axis of rotation, R. So torques require forces, but they also require to apply them perpendicular to the radius of rotation. In general, the force, the tangential force or torque, is the, the lever arm or radius of rotation times the force that's perpendicular to it. There is no torque applied if these are not perpendicular to each other. The torque will increase if you push with more force or if you use a bigger distance. So imagine if you need to rotate a really big pipe and loosen it, you're not going to use a short wrench. You're going to use one of those big pipe wrenches that are very long and you're going to be pushing down on the end of it, which is located very far away from where the pipe is actually going to rotate. Because you've increased the torque by increasing the radius of uh, rotation or the lever arm. Also, a lot of times we don't um, rotate things exactly perpendicular. So imagine that you're rotating or trying to get this merry-go-round to go if you pull so that you're pulling parallel to the radius of uh, rotation, then you're not going to get any, it's not going to move at all. The torque is zero. That force is being applied, but it's not applied in any way perpendicular. And if you, if you apply it at an angle, right, like this guy is doing, it's the uh, component that's perpendicular to the force that's being applied that's actually doing the rotation. So for that reason, a lot of times you're going to see the formula or torque as, <coughs> excuse me, the radius times the force times the sine of the angle between the radius. So here's an example. You've got your lever arm here, or the moment arm as your book likes to call it which is just the radius of rotation. And you're applying a force up at an angle here with respect to the horizontal. So in effect, that radius vector is, and that force are located apart from each other by this angle. So you just wanna take sine of that angle because if you take sine of that angle, then you're going to get that component of the force that's actually doing the work. And the units are going to be newtons times meters. So here's an example. So let's consider this person who's starting the rotation of the merry-go-round, and he's doing it with 100 newtons at an angle of 30 degrees. And he has a radius, um, and the radius is 10 meters. This is a really big, uh, you know, merry 
go around. So the torque would be F times R, 100 times 10 times the sine of 30, or 500 newton meters. Let me just comment on the units. This may look very sim similar to the units for a joule, a newton meter. The difference is when we found joules or found work, we were using forces that were parallel to each other and cosine theta. But in this case, we're not doing that. So we're not really finding the energy that we're putting into the system. We are actually finding the counterpart to force or the thing, torque, that starts something rotating. Also, torque has a direction. So if it causes a counterclockwise angular acceleration, it's positive. So if it's going around like this to the left, then it has a positive value. And if it is going around like this, clockwise, to the right, it is a negative value. So remember that Newton's second law said that the acceleration of a system is equal to the net force divided by the mass. So now we're going to look at the angular acceleration of a system, which is going to be equal to the counterpart of force torque R times F, divided by the uh, moment of inertia, mr squared, or torque divided by i. So the acceleration is f over m, and alpha, the angular acceleration, is equal to tau torque all over i, moment of inertia. And also, if we want to find, you know, if we wanted to find the torque, the net torque, because remember this is the net torque, just like this is the net force, the net torque is just simply I times alpha. So our, our um, mass is, is given by the moment of inertia. The acceleration is given by alpha, the angular acceleration, and F is given by tau.